with the fabulous author Erin Faulkner, who has a brand new book out, and it's called How to Break Up with Friends. And Erin, I saw the title of this book. We have some mutual friends, and I thought, oh my God, I need this because I need to break up with so many people in my life, like right. yes. <laughs> kind of acquaintances, longtime friends, toxic yep. friends. So I was like, oh, what a fascinating premise for a book. Tell right. me what inspired you to write How to Break Up with Friends. So it's funny. My, I had my first book come out a couple of years ago, which is called How to Get Shit Done, Why Women Need to Stop Doing Everything So They Can Achieve Anything. And that's kind of rooted in the female you know, empowerment and female productivity space, kind of redefining what that looks like, what that should or could look like for women. And as I was looking to write the follow-up to that, I kind of went down a million little rabbit holes that all hit dead ends. And I was like, this, this feels like a retread or I'm not, you know, whatever, just the, the ideas didn't work for me. And as I was in that process, I woke up one morning at like six in the morning, half awake, half asleep. And this sentence, how to break up with your friends, uh, just kind of popped in my mind. And I kind of tried to go back to sleep, couldn't go back to sleep. For the next couple of days, this, it just kept kind of surfacing and resurfacing to the point where I stopped and it was like, what is this? What is, what, is, what is this all about? And I started to look at my own friendships and I realized I had so many built up like irritations or resentments or I missed people that I was still in friendships with, but like, I guess I wasn't getting enough from them, wanted more. And I was like, I, as I do dove deeper, I was like, it's unbelievable. We have this like untapped energy source in front of us with these friendships that we just kind of take for granted. We just kind of dial in. We don't really have eyes on them or audit it in any concrete or actionable way. And so what ends up happening, because you're not really paying attention to these relationships, like you are a romantic partner, or your, you know, your family members, you end up kind of having these rifts that, that, you know, can form, you don't even really realize it until you look and go, oh, wow, I actually... I'm super indifferent to this relationship or I'm really irritated by this relationship. And so the idea behind the book is to it. like, yeah, is to like get eyes on it, take an audit. Like we are a culture that is obsessed with information. We know every calorie we eat, every gram of fat, we're wearing watches that track every step, including like minute runs to take a pee. Like we don't want to miss a beat of our steps. We've got the Marie Kondo of like, does this chair bring me joy? Does this shirt bring me joy? But with the people in our lives, the actual people, like, you know, the important things. We don't do that audit. Um, there's nothing wow. at all. And so I thought this was a particularly fascinating topic. And I sold this book February 23rd, 2020. Three weeks later, we went into quarantine. I had no idea how much of a topic this was going to become when all of these people were kind of like ripped out of our lives. And we were forced to kind of have a reckoning about who do we really miss? Who do we absolutely not want to have a Zoom happy hour with? Like, you know, and yeah. so yeah. that's kind of the genesis. And it just kept becoming more and more important over, you know, the last two years. So you mentioned women. Do men have, um, is it hard for men to break up with friends too? Or is this more of a female thing? Well, I, I honestly, you know, I think that this is really a female thing. I yeah. think before you even get to a breakup, and I don't think men are walking around breaking up with friends. I think they have a real ability, though, when they're irritated, when they're mad to just say it oh, and say, hey, bro, like that, what that was, that was effed up. Why'd you do that? Oh, I did that because, oh, not cool. Sorry, sorry. Let's go have a beer. And they don't hold on to those re resentments. They don't talk themselves out of saying what they're feeling. And like, I know just in my case, like with, when I looked at why do I have so many resentments and it's cause I never said anything at the, you know, at the time it was happening and I can really like jump back to certain exchange, you know, incidences yeah. where yeah. I would get irritated. And then I'm like, I'm going to say something and then cut to 10 minutes later. And I've totally talked myself out of it. You know, she's, in, she's going through something rough. I don't know if it's the right time. Maybe this would be better if we weren't at a restaurant. And then, then, how's this going to look? Maybe this friendship doesn't demand this type of, you know, whatever. And God. all of a sudden it's like, and, and I've talked myself out of it, you know, and I just don't think that happens with men. And what's funny when I looked at it, I have three really good guy friends that I've had for a long, long time. And I don't have those problems with them. Now, the relationships aren't as nuanced, as deep. They are less kind of ride or die in the sense of like the female friendships can be. 
But when I have a problem with one of my guy friends, I'm like, don't do that. That's rude. You right. Know, I just see it. Like, right. I'm not, there's nothing other, there's no like, hey, I feel crappy about what you just did. Don't do that again. Oh, sorry. You know, and, and it's like water under the bridge. So I was reading, you know, you kind of say this whole thing, how to break up with, with friends starts with ourselves. And, you, right. and one of the big things is you say, identify your friend style. So what do you mm-hmm. mean by that? Well, I think the first thing is like when you're going to do an audit about, you know, the people in your life is you got to start with you. You got to got a firm understanding of, you know, kind of who you are now, where you are, how you got here and where you want to go. And and only until you answer those questions, can you really start to be intentional about the people that really the relationships that make sense to support kind of where you are and where you want to go. Right. And then one of the pieces of really understanding, you know, whether a relationship is working or whether it's like a good fit for you is what's your relationship style? What do you need to support that? So in other words, are you the type of person that's like the creative friend and is always down to brainstorm and, um, you know, help, you know, elevate creative ideas? And, and Or are you like the fun friend that is the person that like, is always down to go out and like socialize. Are you like the fixer, which I am, where people come to me when they have, my friends come to me where it's like, oh my God, this is happening. I don't know what to do. Oh my God, I have a big job interview tomorrow. Does this sound good? Like, what should I say? And so when I identified that about myself, I was like, oh great. And I was like proud of that, right? But when I looked deeper in it, I was like, so what, happens is is that because i kind of have this persona in relationships i realized that i never brought any sort of my own vulnerability to the table um because i thought that it would kind of ruin my friendship cred like but but i'm the person that knows how to handle everything when in fact i can still be that person but if i really want to have a robust like give and take relationship i also have to be human about it and when i do feel scared or don't know what to do share that be vulnerable enough to like go not to everybody but to identify this is the person that can be that for me because everybody you know you're dy- we're dynamic and we might lead with a certain style or or or, or personality but you want to open up the aperture as much as you can right because that's where you're really living as opposed to just playing one note on the piano um, so t- I was telling you this, you know, in, in my life, like everyone's life, right. You, you start out yeah. with a mate, you know, you have friends come and go some, some it's yeah. very easy, right? Like you just, maybe you meet at work, one changes jobs, you know, eventually it kind of like phases out and it doesn't right. seem right. like there's any sort of friend breakup. Right. But then there are people right. that in your life that are much more intimate. It is like a relationship. Right. So, right. um, and I was telling you, you know, I've gone through this with people that I've known for years, you know, and it's like, it's so funny because I, I love that person and I hold on to these great memories that we had right. 10 years ago, 15 right. years ago, but then the person they are now is quite toxic or we, we really right. just don't have any vulnerability or anything in common. So right. for people listening that are going through all kinds of different things, right? Right. Friends deceive us after years. So right. after you make the decision to break up, do you mm-hmm. address in the book how to do it? <laughs> yes, do it? Okay, I do. How do we do it? Oh, no, no. There's so... So the funny thing is that the the book is 10 chapters. There's only one chapter on how to break up with your friends, but it is a very detailed, very detailed chapter. And it not only does it talk about all the different possible scenarios, I mean, within reason, you know, trying to cover the general swath of scenarios that could happen. There are actual conversation starters, literally like, this is how I would start off this conversation. This is how I would start off this email because often it is just getting into the conversation or the dialogue or sending the email. That is the the hardest part. And the thing is when I, when I was embarking on writing this, I'm um, a psychotherapist and I had this epiphany I love that, it. you know, there's individual therapy, couples therapy, family therapy, no such thing as friendship therapy. And what that means to me is that there's no language around navigating conflict. There's no kind of general rules about how to, you know, or or blueprint of what friendships should look like, how long they should last, how to know when to get out of them, how to know when to double down on them. And, and so like, there's so many behaviors that we accept in friendships just because that we would never accept like in, 
a romantic situation. Like what? <laughs> what are what are some of the ones that you researched or or found? Yeah. So I was actually being interviewed by Maria Menounos the other day, and she said to me, "Okay, Aaron, Aaron, I've got this friend. We've known each other forever, um, and literally over the last two years, we've with great gusto." made plans time and time again. We've decided time, place, date, you know, the whole thing. We can see the text exchange, very excited. And without fail, the last 10 times, 10 times, she is either the night before or the morning of canceled. Just like, sorry, can't make it. Wow. And okay. every time I'm left, you know, very upset. She pulls out her phone. She goes, look, I, I, I'm not telling a lie. Check. And I look at the text and I go, Maria, I got news for you. You're not in a friendship with this person. You're in some kind of relationship, but this person is not committed to you in any way. It's all lip service. And I said, let's look at it a different way. If you were dating this person yes. and the last 10 times that you'd made plans, they had canceled. She said, I wouldn't even get to 10 times. Exactly. Why is that? Because we've got clear boundaries established either subconsciously wow. or consciously that there are just certain behaviors that are intolerable. And yet for friendships, we're constantly making excuses. And again, that's kind of the talking yourself out of it. Like, just like when we were at the top of the show, I think before you hit record, you were saying about your own circumstance and, you know, just like you've grown apart, she might be displaying toxic behavior, but every time you think about ending it with her, you start to rationalize, but we've been together so long, you know, we've, she's seen me at such a great place in my life and I, her, and we have all these warm memories. So, but you're, you're, that's not talking about current behaviors, current patterns. And the truth of the matter is that relationship can be, can be such a great memory and you can look back on it fondly if you end it when it's supposed to end when Ooh. you let it on all of a sudden now that's the di dictating emotion I irritation frustration um you know the, the just like i don't i don't know something to handle as opposed to like enjoy and live you know live through the experience and so that's also like a really good reason, you know, I personally have had, I think we all have had these kind of legacy friendships where totally, totally it's not even, it's not even necessarily that the other person is doing bad things. It's just, as we evolve as humans, we often evolve in different directions, especially if like you're a person that has left town or moved cities and like all of a sudden, you know, you're growing in a different way or a different, sure. speed. not necessarily better, just different. So this chasm grows and we feel bad about it, but we're not going to change it because that's who we're evolving to towards as people, right? So we don't do anything about it. And what happens is there's this like kind of built up resentment. And what often happens is one of the parties is more invested in hanging out in connecting. Yeah. And one of the parties is like, no, I just don't want to. And I don't feel close enough or as energized by this person to like, say or do anything about it yeah but then it's just kind of lying there laying there taking up energy see you know it's kind of like a hard drive spinning you it's like you got to turn off that program oh my god i know? love this and, and my issue too with this with this friendship is i'm talk about knowing myself i'm a person yeah. that's a you know an internal optimist i love right. you know and i love helping people problem solve but then you have to take action so where i am right. is, oh. Totally. In, in this relationship is this person for years and years and years, we get together and we talk about the same problems over and over and we go through all the solutions and then nothing ever happens. And we get together two months later and we are still talking years later. And so it's like, years. I can't, mm -hmm. I can't do anymore. But I realized right. our friendship without that conversation, that kind of negative right. pattern of, we don't really have a lot. There's nothing else to talk about, you know? So right. it's like, I can't do it. So I'm exactly. And so, and so that's a really, that's a really good example because this is obviously a pattern that is not working for you. And I actually talk specifically about that exact scenario. I interviewed a woman from Toronto who's a big talk show host, and she had the same thing where she had one girlfriend who just had really bad patterns with men and would just repeat them over and over then and over. crying to her. And, and, you know, she, as you like is a, is a problem solver and wants to, you know, workshop like the best outcome and how can we not repeat mistakes? And then time after, time after time goes back out into the world, does the exact same thing, comes crying back. And here we go again, just retreading, retreading. And what I said to her, her name's Sasha, what I said to her is obviously this is something that you need to break the cycle of this. This is not, this isn't working for either of you. Her behavior is not changing. You're getting more frustrated. You're wasting your energy and your time. Um, and, and, and now it has become the defining feature of your friendship. 
Now, I don't know if that always was, but the problem is, is that if this had been caught a lot earlier, maybe it wouldn't be the defining feature of your friendship, right? Maybe you could have been able to head it off or maybe it wasn't, or maybe you, that relationship shop would just not be worth it to you if you thought about it even all those years back. But in any event, you can make choices about it when you have awareness about these patterns and these habits that are coming in friendships, right? The other thing is, is very important is that you need to ask yourself what in me keeps tolerating this mm. because information you know there are of course toxic people but in the end of the day this is a toxic relationship and that means that relationally you are involved you are responsible somehow in even if it is only that i'm keeping it alive i'm yeah. allowing it to exist what in me needs this to keep going on um and I, I kind that. of had, yeah, I kind of had a similar situation, which I talk about in the book. I had this friend, I think we all might have this kind of friend at some point in our lives where she was great, life of the party, very funny, but at all times her life was falling apart. There's always, you know, I've been kicked out of my apartment. My cat just got hit by a car. My, you know, fi my hair salon's on fire like you know ev like you're just like what how could this be happening like just week after week and so but she was also the life of the party and so much fun you know what I mean so I would being the fixer I would be that call oh my god Aaron I don't know what to do I need help and I would jump in full force try and you know fix the situation try and navigate you know help her navigate it whatever and it just kept going on and escalating and escalating and escalating to the point that that friendship ended. But at the time, I just kind of dismissed her as a, you know, a toxic person and took zero responsibility. And again, her behavior was bad and probably causing the lion's share of the problems in the relationship. But when I look back on it, I was like, I had this need this God complex with this girl. I had this like ego in the sense that, look, here I go saving a life again. And what in me needed this kind of validation is totally wacko. I don't, I don't need to be taking 3 a.m. calls, workshopping, you know, whatever disaster yeah. of the day was going on with her. So that it's, it's, these things are relational and you want to look as much at, about at yourself and like just what could be going on. Cause then that's a real, growing moment, a teachable moment that you can maybe avoid doing in future relationships. Oh, and I mean, I, you know, because I've been in therapy for so many years. I mean, I know my issues, which is people right. pleaser and I hate disappointing. So it's like, right. it's easier to just let things exactly. phase out, ghost out, instead of just having a conversation or just kind of finalizing things. I'm just like, ah, right. phase out, phase out. And then I'm not, I'm not, I'm not disappointing anyone. I, right. In your research though, because I kind of have a theory, which is not based okay. in any science, except for <laughs> interviewing people so it's based in no science but i i think in society now because we live in a society more 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 I, I i truly believe you probably only have a couple meaning five or less true dear dear friends your entire yeah. life and if if you have that you're very very fortunate but there's this I, and even in, as you're in your 30s it's like oh i can't make friends and i need all these friends yeah, I actually think that's fucking crazy. Like, I, I just yeah. think people should ex like have two great friends you focus on yeah. and then that's all you need. But what, yeah. how many friends do we need? Well, here's the thing. So look, the, the, th this is just basic math, right? Like if you want to have a meaningful relationship where the relationship gives, it is dynamic, you commit to it, there's time, you absolutely cannot, you don't have capacity or bandwidth for more than, five of those, right? Ah. And that's like kind of at the high end. And I think in the book, I say there's a scientist who says like to reach a, a, a true connection uh, with somebody, with a friend, you have to spend about 200 hours. And so if you factor that in, that's why I say it's math. Ah. It's just like mathematically, these people that are like, I've got 25 friends. I'm like, we have a very different definition of what friendship is. Because I'm talking about these relationships as major kind of stalwart people in your life. Um, and, you know, saying hi to somebody across the street or across, like, excuse me, a soccer, you know, field at your kid's game, that's an odd friendship. You can be friendly. And I think it's like drawing the, the line around 
you know, we call everybody our friend. Everybody's our friend on social media. You know, everybody, we, you know, I constantly get introduced to people like, this is my friend, this is my friend, this is my friend. I've, I've, I'm like, I've never even heard of these people and you're one of my best friends. How could all of these people be your friends? And what we're doing is like just diluting I know. the world. We're like hijacking what it really is to be a true friend. Wow. That's so good. I'm glad to hear you say that because I do think there's just this expectation that we should have these big friend groups all the time. And I'm like, right. this is crazy. And then people get very disappointed. Oh, this major thing, I got divorced and no one was there for me. And it's like, right. because these people aren't really your friends. You have like right. two dear friends. Okay, this was something else interesting that you you shared on your Instagram, and I was curious, because yeah. it almost sounded like misery likes company, but I don't think this is what you're saying. You say that friendships kind of do well when you share the same shortcomings. Um, what does that mean? That kind of said, to me, that sort of meant like, okay, well, if we're both big drinkers, <laughs> it'll work no. out. <laughs> Tell me what that means. No, so what I... I I spend a lot of time in the book talking about like when you look at the people in your life, you want to be really kind of intentional about having friends that are similar to you, 